and it's been a great game in the second semi-final at VFL Park from where the news is that Carlton are through to the 1987 grand final with an inspiring 15 point win over Hawthorne and look at the way they did it. They were behind at quarter time by two goals. They kicked themselves out of it or did their best to in the second quarter when they kicked one nine to trail by 15 points at half time. The Hawks made the early running with three quick goals in the third quarter for a five goal lead and then Carlton came back to kick the next four goals of the quarter and trail by nine points at the last change and it was all Carlton in the last term as they kicked five goals two to 1-2 to win by 15 points in front of 64,333 uh, patrons at VFL Park. And for the second year in a row, the Hawks have got to go through via the preliminary final. Stephen Kernahan kicked three goals for Carlton to be their major uh, contributor up forward. Evans kicked two coming off the interchange bench. And for Hawthorne, two each to Dunstall and Platten. So a repetition of last year with the Blues too good in the second semi. And the difference, of course, this year is that Hawthorne hasn't finished on top of the ladder. So to win the Premiership, it will need to do so after playing on four consecutive weeks. That won't be easy. Well, now time to hear the story from two greats of the game who have been watching the action out there this afternoon, John Nichols and Bernie Quinlan. John Nichols, a Carlton Premiership captain on a few occasions, Premiership coach in 1972 when he was actually a playing coach. And I'm sure he's a pretty proud blue out there this afternoon, Big Nick. Great day for the Blues. Yes, it was, Tim. Uh, I must, uh, with blue uh, blood running through your veins, it's very hard to be objective, I must say, when you're commentating because uh, naturally uh, you can't uh, get that out of your blood. But uh, it was a great day. They came from behind. They withstood the pressure. And really, winning the game, they won it playing Hawthorne style of football. And that was just pressure football, harassing, tackling, desperation. And as the game went on, uh, it was a few of the, um, probably uh, Tuck uh, who played well, but for the older legs of Hawthorne that probably didn't uh, didn't run quite as much. What you're saying is that maybe Hawthorne wilted, which is something uh, we don't say too lightly or too often. Well, it, they probably did a little bit, but uh, Dunstall, who had kicked, kicked two goals, went off injured. I felt that Silvani really kept him under control most of the game. He played very well at full back on, on Dunstall. Uh, Brereton really was beating Dorotich, even though Brereton didn't kick, um, you know, wasn't a real damaging player, but Dorotich had a horror day, lost, uh, he's lost confidence, he's lost touch, and certainly he must be a big worry for Carlton, but uh, all in all, really, um, Hawthorne's forwards in a low-scoring game didn't really look, look dangerous, because uh, their match winner last week in Bacchanara was completely blanketed by the brilliant Rhys Jones. Rhys uh, performed superbly in the second semi last year, as I recall, uh, not so good in the grand final, but he had a lot of mates. Uh, he, he really looked as if he was at his best today, did he? Well, it wasn't the number of possessions he had, but it was the way he went about it. Punching and spoiling, he was bouncing off uh, a couple of times. They tried to bump him and he just rolled off them, kept possession of the ball, 20 metre hand pass. Uh, but, you know, what he does is all class and he kept his cool, uh, which is great. And, uh, I, you know, he's probably one of the most important parts of the uh, Carlton back line as the season's worn on. Bernie, I think you saw the match in round 14 when uh, Hawthorne beat Carlton by a point. Perhaps the opposite of today's, Carlton made the early run. It was in the first four minutes after the long break and uh, it wasn't looking too good for Carlton. It looked as if Hawthorne were going to really run away with the game. But uh, after that, uh, Carlton were kicking into a fairly strong wind and they fought back very tenaciously in that third quarter and uh, ended up, after being 15 points down at half time, they ended up only being nine points down at three quarter time and uh, it was a tremendous performance in that third quarter to really fight back. It really does give the win a lot of merit, it would seem. Well, I thought it was a tremendous win. You consider uh, they kicked um, nine goals to one after that four minute mark of the third quarter. So that's how they completely dominated the second half of the match. And you describe it the same way as Nick did, they out Hawthorne Hawthorne? Yes, uh, yes, it was a tremendous performance by Carlton. Um, they are a much improved side on last year. Kernahan went to full forward and took a couple of screamers and kicked two telling goals in the last quarter. And uh, all over the ground they lifted. Uh, Naley was fantastic. Bradley kept running the ball down in that forward line in the last quarter and uh, they really looked desperate to win him. OK, Nick, we might just go back to you for some of the uh, tactics and the man-on-man -man stuff that went on. You mentioned Rhys Jones being given the huge job on Bacchanara and Dorotich uh, did get the job on Brereton. Uh, what were some of the other moves? Ede on Bradley again? 
Yes, uh, that's right. Probably most of the moves were fairly predictable, really. Uh, but probably uh, Hunter started off very well in the on, on, in the forward line, took four marks in that first quarter. But really, as the game went on, uh, Swab was picking up Johnson. Uh, Hawthorne, as two or three times, Alan Jeans got desperate and started switching uh, Rich, uh, Morris uh, to, to the half-back line to pick up Hunter. At the finish-up, when Dunstall went off, uh, Cohen really had to go full forward for a while, and then he played down the field, and Bacanaro dropped back in there. But most of the moves were fairly predictable. Glass got started off on Dipper. Dipper probably had the edge on him, and then after half-time, uh, Tommy Alvin was put on to Dipper, who I believe uh, he quietened him right down. But Dipper also was found out with pace, I think, in the last half, as was uh, probably Gary Ayres, uh, Carlton. Carlton are aware that uh, Gary is a great player in the back pocket, but he doesn't like running and chasing right down the ground, chasing Rovers all day. And Gleeson and Evans, in particular, and Naily, they they kept on making Ayres cover a lot of territory. But uh, no, all in all, the, probably the the tactics didn't um, have that much uh, influence on the game. I believe uh, it was just just wearing wearing each each other down. The side making the least number of mistakes in low-scoring games, of course, that's important because uh, you know you can battle, you know you can battle all a quarter really for two or three goals, and two mistakes can cost you the same amount. So the tactics, I don't believe, made that much difference to the game. It was just man in man all over the ground. Okay, uh, look, we can go down to the Carlton rooms, I believe. Drew Morford's with Mark Naley, who was the biggest possession winner on the ground, and uh, Drew, it's over to you with Mark. OK, thanks, Tim. Yes, the biggest pos possession winner, all right. What a day you had. It wasn't a bad day, is it? It's quite enjoyable. That's the first final that I've reckon I've played in for about, I reckon, seven or eight years, so it's a great feeling for sure. And is this what coming to Victoria was all about, so you could play with a top team and get finals? Well, that's, you know, the main reason why I came here. I want to win a premiership. You know, when I was back in Adelaide, I was with a side that was finishing eighth and ninth every year. I'd made my goal set, you know, I set my goal to start the year to you know, win a premiership with Carlton. You know, one more game away and hopefully we'll do it. Well, we will do it. I know that after today's performance we will do it for sure. I remember talking to President John Elliott after last year's disappointing grand final performance and he said the big plus for us next year will have Navy. Well, you'd be pleased with this season, although you, you struggled a bit at the start. You had a few reserves games there for a while, didn't you? I found, you know, the first five or six games, I found it very, very hard. You know, just changing over, you know, trying to find a job, just getting, you know, really getting into a routine over here. You know, uh, the club's been behind me, which has been great. Um, you know, they've really put up with me. They've given me every, you know, every opportunity over the last, say, ten weeks or so, and hopefully I won't let them down, you know, in two weeks' time. And you know you kicked the last nine goals to one. You swarmed Hawthorne sort of in a fashion that they usually do to the opposition. Well, we worked very hard this year. You know, there's no doubt about that. We've you know, put, a lot of our, sorry, put a lot of hours on the track, a lot of competitive work. So you know, that last half, we just threw everything at them, and you know, that's what um, you know, paid off. You know, as you see, kicking nine goals to one, that's the, you know, that proved it. And when you got to the front towards the end, you were just happy to see the ball out. You were just uh, getting there in numbers, fours, fives and sixes. Oh, we were desperate. You know, we don't we want to get the grand final. We don't want to play the preliminary final. Now, our aim today was to win it, have a week's rest, work half the next, say, ten days, and you know, get ready for it next time. Yes, well, finishing on top, you had a week's rest last week. You get another one now. Is that a red-hot preparation for a grand final if you're only going to play two games in a month? Well, it's been our goal right from the start of the year. You know, it's, it's been perfect so far. Our, you know, our first goal was, firstly, we finished top, minor premiers. Our second goal was to win the second semi-final. Our third goal, which is going to be achieved, is winning the grand final. I know Walls and the team behind there, they'll make sure we've, you know, we're ready for it. I'm positive. Well, it sounds like your year is going to get even better because uh, you kicked those four magnificent goals in one quarter against Victoria for South Australia. Uh, you won the medal for the carnival. You could be in a premiership team. Oh, I had a baby last Sunday. <laughs> oh, you've had a, I've had a great week. Time. Yeah, it's been a good time. Are they yeah. going to give you a chance to celebrate? Or is it straight down to hard work? No, now? tonight we can celebrate. I'm sure of that. Uh, but tomorrow we'll be back on the track at 9.30. You know, we'll be out there swinging it out of us again. Good on you, Mark. Congratulations. Job well done today and for the season. Thanks, Drew. Okay, thanks very much, Drew. Drew, uh, you did mention um, last week from the rooms news on a possible report. Did it look as though there were any out there today? Yes, there's a possible. I haven't had it confirmed, but it looks like Bernie Evans may have been reported in the second quarter. I'll go and get the confirmation on that if I can and bring it to you, hopefully with another interview live from the Carlton Rooms. Terrific. Thanks very much, Drew. And uh, for Bernie Evans' sake, it's to be hoped that he doesn't suffer the fate of 
Fraser Murphy, who uh, had that happen to him in the second semi against Hawthorne this time last year, and of course he missed the grand final. Well, back to Bernie Quinlan firstly, and uh, Mark says Carlton will win. He knows it now, Bernie. Uh, would you be that confident? Uh, well, it's uh, still a long way to go, Tim. Uh, you've, you've, you've chopped and changed all year now, come on. <laughs> uh, no, look, I, I uh, fancied Carlton at the start of the year, and I went for them last night again, Tim. But uh, the way they're playing, and they're playing with tre tremendous determination and dedication, and they're playing for a cause. And I think they've got uh, Peter Motley at the back of their mind, and also uh, the injury to De the illness to Des English. And uh, I think they're really determined to win this one, uh, Tim, so I'm going to stick with Carlton. And Mark Naley, really, after a, a slow start, has become a top player, and uh, he might be a key to it all. He was tremendous today. He was in everything, uh, easily the best on the ground. And uh, after a slow start, as uh, Drew said, he has really uh, picked up the bit and uh, is playing tremendous football, and he's uh, giving Carlton plenty of drive around the pack, and uh, that's just what they need. As good a player as Platten, potentially? Well, I think so. On today's performance, you know, it was a real pressure finals game. And uh, Naley really came through with flying colours, and that's all you can ask for. He really performed on the day. Nick, another thing to come out of the interview was uh, this business of finishing on top and then winning the second semi. Carlton actually have won a couple of premierships via that route. Do you think it's a worry at all? Well, it's, it's a worry to me, uh, Tim, because I, <coughs> I really don't like the idea of sides uh, after having a hard probably nine months training, playing nearly 30 games, to have two weeks off as far as playing games in a month. It's got to be a worry, but still, I'd rather be there than not uh, having to fight your way through the primary final uh, next weekend. So I think it's uh, the good and the bad. Certainly it's good to be there, but uh, I'm sure that Robert Walls is going to have a lot of thoughts. Uh, I'm sure also that Carlton are well aware if they play Hawthorne in the grand final, they'll have to do quite a few things a bit different and use different tactics than the, what they did today. So, But I'm sure that uh, Robert has been through that. He, um, I've got every confidence uh, in Robert Walls as a coach. Uh, I'm sure they'll come up with something different, but it must be a worry to have those only those two hard games in a month. 365 days ago, everyone was saying Carlton had shown their hand early and uh, they might be sitting ducks, and it seemed that that's the way it turned out. Do you think there is some prospect of that again? Well, I don't believe uh, they showed their hand today so much. Uh, uh, to me, most of the placings uh, are orthodox. Uh, I don't think they can shuffle sides around. Hawthorne can play players in different positions, but same as Carlton can. But I really when the, believe when the real crunch comes that if Carlton were to play Hawthorne in the grand final, hypothetically, next week, it'd be a similar style of game. It'd be a, probably a, it wouldn't be like last year's grand final, and I really don't know who won, who would win. Naturally, I, you know, naturally I support Carlton, but you know Hawthorne are such a great side at. Um, you know, and football's a funny business that, uh, you know, they've still got to front up next week. If Dunstall is seriously injured, I hope for Hawthorne's sake he's not. He appeared to limp off pretty badly with his ankle. But, uh, you know, Hawthorne, I'm sure, will bounce back. Uh, they've been almost the best side throughout the year and they still have to be favourites, whoever they play out here next weekend. Well, Alan Jeans certainly managed to turn things around between the second semi and the grand final last year. For the second year in a row, he's lost the second semi. Uh, with his Hawks going down by 15 points at VFL Park. And we can go down to the Hawthorne rooms now, where the coach of the Brown and Golds is with Peter G. Alan, does it feel any different to this time last year? Oh, well, we were in the same position last year, so we, um, you know, it's up to our, the players now to lift themselves and uh, try and get over next week to get back into the grand final. Do you put it down as a fade-out after that first four minutes of the third term, or were Carlton on a run that uh, would have been hard for you to stop even uh, if you were playing at your best? Oh, yes, we should have. You know, we had the momentum, we had the wind in the uh, third quarter, we got to over 30 points in front, and uh, we should have went on from there, but we took our finger off the button, and uh, to Carlton's credit, they fought back in, and uh, they got uh, the initiative away from us, and um, they ended up doing very well into the wind, and uh, of course then in the last quarter when they had the wind and the players lifted, and uh, they went on to a good win. Did you see evidence of your players relaxing there when they did get that great start to the term, which no doubt you were looking for? Oh, well, you, you know, you always hope that the players can go on, but it's a very unpredictable game and, uh, you know, anything can happen and uh, uh, they just took it away from us. Out of the middle, uh, Gary Bacanara gave you a great drive uh, last week. Um, David Rhys-Jones did a terrific job on him today. Is that the way you expected them to line up? Oh, well, we had certain reasons why we played uh, Gary up there and, um, you know, and, uh, 
you know, um, Gary didn't play the dominant game like he played the week before, uh, and um, so we were, you know, we went that way, and we got to abide by the decision whether it was right or wrong. Well, only time will tell. What did you do this stage last uh, year in this week coming up to the preliminary final, uh, and will you approach things similarly this year? Oh well, we always stick to the normal routine. We don't try to do anything different because. Uh, after all the excitement and all that, and I know finals create this, that uh, it's just another game of football which our blokes are quite experienced at playing. Does that excitement drag something physically out of the players as well? Would you, you like that week's rest? Uh, in the last quarter there, it seemed as though Carlton benefited by it. Oh, well, if you win, it uh, seems to benefit. If you lose, then it's the argument. It appears to be obvious. Uh, you know, it's an obvious thing, and people sort of, if you win, they, they say, well, uh, the spell did them good. If you lose, well, uh, they say well, it's the other way. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of pros and cons for both of them. If you can get through without injuries, but unfortunately, the two games we've played, we've... Uh, you know, sustained a few injuries to our top-class players. Jason Dunstall's ankle, uh, do you know the extent of that injury? Not at this stage. We'll get an x-ray and um, see how, to what extent the damage is. Richard Loveridge, did he stand up to it OK today? Yes, we were quite pleased with him. Uh, you know, we didn't put him on early, uh, you know, just to let the game take a bit of... Yeah, uh, the tempo off the game and then we hoped to bring him in because he'd missed two games and young Collins had been playing well so we decided to go that way but uh, we were quite pleased with Richard's last, uh, particularly his last quarter, he was in there battling all the way and he had a fair few possessions. Do you put Carlton completely out of your minds now and just concentrate on whoever wins tomorrow? We well, only got one objective at this particular stage is the winner of tomorrow's game. Alright Alan, thanks for talking to us. Good Peter. There, I might just fire you a question if you can hear me okay. The uh, the mood in what the room. Go, we just yeah. The mood, Tim, uh, actually is well uh, more subdued than last week. One uh, would have, of course, expect, but uh, really, Alan, it's uh, it's still a hint of optimism there. I think. Oh, we're not out of it yet, you know. And uh, we got another opportunity, and uh, it's entirely up to the players, you know. And uh, we'll just have to sit down, lick our wounds, and give it a bit of thought, and. Uh, see how we can prepare ourselves for the winner of tomorrow's game. OK, thanks very much. Good. Yes, Tim, uh, it's it's not that uh, down and out as uh, probably pl the people here and the players are thinking back to uh, last year and that they know they can bounce back and uh, that's no doubt on their minds at the moment. Mm, they've trod that road before and uh, they did it successfully last year. Well, let's go back to uh, John Nichols and Bernie Quinlan. And uh, Big Nick, uh, firstly for you. Uh, you mentioned Carlton's worry that uh, they'll play one game in about 21 days, or maybe it's a few more than that. I haven't quite done that bit of arithmetic. Are there any other worries? You did mention Dorotich. Well, Dorotich's uh, lack of confidence and lack of touch uh, was really highlighted today, uh, Tim. We know that uh, he's had two or three uh, you know, pretty severe hits around the head throughout the year. He's been suspended. But uh, he started the game dropping an easy chest mark he tried to pick the, the ball up off the ground a couple of times uh, and, and looked very poor. But I'm sure that uh, he's a goer. He'll, he'll fight back because, um, you know, the responsibilities, I'm sure, will, will bring it out of him playing centre-half back. And I, so that's all that worries me, his, his lack of confidence in the way he attacks the ball. Because early in this season and last season, he was just putting his body right in, attacking the ball, going for his marks playing with confidence and he's lost all that confidence and uh, when, it, when any player let alone Dor Dorotich does that it makes you look very poor but as I said uh, the grand final is another game and whether he plays on Brighton or whoever he plays on I'm sure that he'll still be in there uh, you know, putting, putting pressure on his opponent. Would you have him lining up alongside Brereton at the start of the grand final? Well I think I probably would because uh, Aitken uh, did fairly well today he, he, he had a couple of opponents and uh, Peter Dean did reasonably well uh, they've got a, a, a fairly interchangeable back line uh, with Silvani and Alvin, uh, Aitken, Peter Dean and those sort of players. So, But uh, I, I thought I would have almost been tempted to shift uh, Dorotich off Brereton in, in, by, you know, in the second quarter today, but Robert Walsh knew what he was doing. He probably persevered and, uh, and luckily for Robert and Carlton, Brereton's uh, possessions weren't goals. Bernie talk to you about the Hawthorne forwards. Uh, they have had that multi-pronged attack which look capable really of kicking a huge score against any team in the competition bar none and yet they've kicked 10 goals five, only 15 scoring shots. 
Were they starved or did they fail? Well, Tim, it was a, a real finals game today, real finals pressure. And uh, also it rained fairly heavily in that first quarter, so it made the conditions fairly slippery. And really the conditions weren't really made for uh, forwards today. As we saw, Kernahan was the only player who really got amongst the goals. He kicked three. But, uh, yeah, well, Dunstall kicked two, but it was very difficult. It was really set up for the backmen, and uh, it was really made easy for them because uh, it was very difficult to take marks. And uh, the, actually the Hawthorne forward line looked rather poor today. Brereton, uh, even though uh, Dorotich didn't beat him, didn't have a great day. Morris had to be moved down to the back line to uh, counter Kenny Hunter after uh, he started off in a brilliant fashion, took four or five marks in the first ten minutes, and uh, that saw the end of Morris on the forward line. He ended up back there. And I think they might be struggling a bit if Dunstall's out for the grand final uh, because uh, that'll leave a big hole in their forward line. Well, you say it was a defender's game, and that was seen as Carlton's Achilles. Uh, they seem to have a, a power-laden attack but perhaps not a great defence. It looks as though they might have come through a major test. Well, I think uh, the one player that's really strengthened that Carlton back line is Stephen Silvani. Um, he played a great game at full back on Dunstall, kept him to two goals. One was a free kick. And uh, I think if Dorotich doesn't come through in the grand final, I'd be putting Stephen Silvani on uh, Dermot Burton very quickly because he's a tremendously determined player and he's got the happy knack of getting there just in time and uh, spoiling. And uh, he'll match Burton in every department, I think. Well, I think we've covered it pretty well, Nick. We might just talk about the Giants. Uh, Justin Madden against Greg Deere, who's managed to counter him reasonably successfully previously. Uh, did Madden control it today in the end? Oh, I'd say you'd have to give the points uh, on the day to, to Madden. He certainly had much more use of the ball. And uh, uh, Deere, I've seen Deere play a lot better. And then he interchanged with his brother, Paul Deere. And also, on a couple of occasions, Robert Walls uh, used Satori doing centre bounces and putting uh, McKenzie in the forward line. But no, I felt uh, Madden had a lot of use of the ball today. I, you know, I'm, I probably still feel he doesn't do quite enough with it, but whilst he's getting his hand to it first, it means it, you know the opposition isn't. And uh, he, he, he won probably most of the day you know, all around the ground. Took a, <coughs> two, two or three good marks. Uh, he took one very good mark, which kicked a... A very valuable goal in the goal square at one stage, but uh, no, Madden, Madden would be the, the, main, the main winner. We've just seen a shot while you were talking of Jason Dunstall on crutches in the Hawthorne room, so that's not a good sign for them. We might wrap our review up as we did last week with uh, some uh, soothsaying into the future. You've seen the second semi-final. Uh, who's going to win the flag? Well, I don't know if, if I'm first, uh, yeah, first go, Bernie, but I'm the oldest, yes. But uh, no, well, look... <laughs> The wisest, I, Nick? I really think that uh, it's in Carlton's hands now, whether they play Hawthorne or the winner of tomorrow. I, I think that they are capable of doing it. Uh, I, I, obviously, I suppose uh, most supporters, apart from Melbourne and Sydney supporters, hope that Hawthorne win and make it a, another memorable grand final. And if, if Hawthorne do play Carlton, I really think there's very little, very little between them. Uh, Carlton still have to keep winning scores, and I didn't think that 11 goals would win this game, whereas it, you know, it was enough to win. And I don't think that uh, the 11 goals uh, today, they'd have to kick a lot more than that to win the grand final. Bernie? Well, who are you going for, Nick? I'm going for Carlton. Oh, very good. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going for Carlton too, Tim. Uh, that should make you happy, um, because I think they're a much improved side on last year. They've got plenty of versatility around the, about their side this year, and they can move players around if things aren't going well. They're not relying on Coonahan up on the forward line to uh, kick a winning score. They've got Sartori, Kenny Hunter's doing well, and Richard Dennis up there. So they've got plenty of players on the forward line who can kick a winning score. And also, I think I, I like their back line now that Stephen Silvani's back at full back, and uh, also young Aitken, and uh, they're a pretty versatile side now, Nick. I, I was impressed uh, with Satori today, not for his marking or his goal kicking, but probably had two beautiful hit outs in the forward pocket, which both resulted in goals. And uh, this is something that Carlton's been lacking you know, for a while, too. Whilst Madden's on the ball, they've had no real good ruckman there. And that's exactly but, right. Uh, Satori was responsible for two deliberate goals from perfect hit outs, so he can do better as far as marking goes. Yes, that was a memorable one, the one that he hit over the back to, uh, to Johnson, wasn't to it? To yes. Yeah, a magnificent right. tap-out. And uh, whereas I relied on Kernahan last year to do the ruck work on the forward, land, on the forward line, uh, now they've got Sartori, who's a couple of inches taller, and uh, there's a much better look about this Carlton side this year. OK, Bernard Francis and uh, Big John, John Robert, I think it is. Is that correct? That's correct, Timothy. Thank you very much. Timothy, Paul to you. <laughs> Thanks for your uh, report on the second semi-final, which the Blues have won by 15 points to take the short road into the grand final and Hawthorne to meet either Melbourne or Sydney 
in the preliminary back at VFL Park next Saturday afternoon. Well, now to our replay of the big game. Hawthorne kicked with the wind and they were fairly well held by the Blues. They got two goals late in the quarter to open up a 12-point lead at the first change. Carlton doing all the attacking early in the second quarter, kicked a goal and a couple of behinds to reduce the margin to four points. And that's the situation as we join it. Hawthorne 3-2, Carlton 2-4 and our commentary team is Drew Morford, Peter G and Big John Nichols.